What is going on guys? Welcome back to the fifth episode of my series on design patterns. In this video, we're going to be talking about the singleton pattern in the context of this book, Headfirst Design Patterns. Uh, this is an excellent book for learning design patterns. It's a much easier read than the original book by the Gang of Four. Uh, really easy to get through, not too complicated, and it gives a lot of great examples. If you're interested in picking this up, I'll put a link to it in the description below. Uh, but in this video, we're going to talk about four main things. The first thing is going to be what the singleton pattern is. Second, we're going to talk about why the singleton pattern is useful. Then we're going to get into a little bit about how the singleton pattern works. And then finally, I'm going to show you an example of the singleton pattern in my eye. IDE. So let's jump right into it and answer what is the singleton pattern. So I'm going to define it to you according to the definition in this book, Head First Design Patterns. Uh, so the singleton pattern ensures a class has only one instance and provides a global point of access to it. That's it. That's all the singleton pattern is. Very, very basic. One of the most simple but very, very useful design pattern that you see a lot in software development. So it's definitely something that you're going to want to know, especially if you're just getting into software. Um, so that's the definition of the singleton pattern. Let's talk about why it's useful. So in terms of why the singleton pattern is useful, there's two main buckets of reasons why it's useful. Uh, the first one is it allows for what's called lazy loading, lazy loading. And what that essentially means is that lazy loading allows you to do is basically initialize your object creation only when you need it. If you were doing it through like using a global variable or something, that's going to happen at the initialization step of the JVM. Uh, so with lazy loading, you don't have to initialize and create an object uh, unless you're actually going to be using it. So that's one of the benefits of using the singleton pattern. Uh, the second main benefit is when you only really need one instance. So you only really need one, need one. And what I mean by that is like, how about something like a database connection, data base connection. Maybe in certain applications, you want to only have one database connection, uh, or you kind of want to restrict the number and, and restrict the number of database connections through a class. So you only want to have one instance of that. Uh, so that's one kind of potential application of when you only really need one of an object. Uh, the second one, a little bit more abstract, but kind of an interesting thought exercise is like, what if you're building a like kind of a rocket ship guidance system, uh, rocket ship guidance system. And so, you know, it only makes sense to have one instance of the guidance system initialized at any time because this guidance system could be performing actions on the physical hardware that exists in this rocket ship. So you don't want to ever accidentally initialize two because maybe they'll be sending conflicting instructions to the actual hardware. So those are some of the applications of using it in the real world. Uh, truth be told, the singleton pattern is probably the most simple design pattern. It's only like maybe 10 lines of code, but its applications are everywhere and you're always going to be seeing it. Um, so we talked about why it's useful. Now let's get into some of the mechanics of how the singleton pattern works. Let me just make a little bit more room for myself. That looks good. All right. So there are three main kind of components of the singleton pattern or three main things that you need to do to create a singleton pattern. Uh, so the first is you have a class. It all starts with a single class and that class needs to have a private constructor, private constructor. Well, what does that mean? Well, we're basically closing the ability of external classes to create an instance of this class. Second, we also need a private static instance of the class in question. So if our class is called foo class, we need to maintain a reference to a private static instance of that class within that class. A little bit strange to talk about, but it'll make sense when you see it, I promise. And you're, you're probably wondering at this point, like if our constructor is private, how do we create an instance or how do people even get access to an instance? That is a good question. And the answer is we have kind of a factory method that's responsible for creating an instance. So we have a factory method, uh, method, for creation. And by the way, the, the factory method is a static method. So it's going to be at the class level, uh, static method for creation. 
So that is all it really takes to create a, um, a, a singleton. You basically just have a private constructor, you have a private static instance of the class that you wanna create, and then you code up a factory method. And the, me the mechanics of the factory method, like the actual code block is super, super simple. And let me actually just grab a picture of it here really quick so you can see what we're dealing with. Um, so this is an example of the factory pattern of this um, singleton called rocket ship in this case. And it's very, very simple. Like, look at this. Uh, so if rocket ship is equal to null, uh, keep in mind rocket ship is a class level static variable. We basically just define a new rocket ship instance and then return that back. Simple as can be, right? Not really. There's a little bit of problems with this. And the problem is uh, it typically surfaces in the multi-threading world where you have multiple threads that are operating all at once. And so let me walk you through kind of a thought exercise of where this can become a problem in terms of multi-threading environment. So let's say we have two threads, thread one, thread one, and thread two, right? And these two threads are operating on the same machine and they're gonna kind of wanna get a, an instance of this rocket ship class. Now remember, in this rocket ship class, it's gonna be controlling the guidance system. So it is extremely, extremely important to ever only create one instance of the rocket ship and never more than one. So let's consider one case here. Let's consider the case where we have two threads that are trying to get an instance. So they call the get instance method of the rocket ship class. Now let's say the first thread enters this code block here. So we say, you know, if rocket ship is equal to null, then we, we say a rocket ship is new rocket ship, right? So this is the first time this get instance method is being run. So we're gonna about to create a new rocket ship instance. At least that's what thread number one wants to do in this case. Now, what happens if we have thread number two that also enters this code block or calls this method at exactly the same time? So now we have two threads right here. They've already run if, if rocket ship is equal to null. So they both think that rocket ship is equal to null. Well, then they're gonna assign a new instance of the rocket ship to the rocket ship static class instance, and then they're gonna overwrite it. And basically whoever finished this code block last, thread one or thread two, I guess it would be thread two in this case, is gonna overwrite the rocket ship with whatever instance that it created during its invocation. We saw that this is a really big problem and it's something that we can't tolerate in the singleton pattern. So this is something that you need to be careful of and how people typically solve this problem in the Java programming language is they use what's called a synchronized block and a synchronized block ensures that only one thread can enter a certain section of code at once uh, so you never actually run into this problem. So what you'd have to actually do is just kind of like put a synchronized block at this section here. You can even put it on the, the class method uh, if you really want, but try to limit your usage of synchronized because it's a little bit of an expensive call. Um, so really all you have to do is add a synchronized block on this stuff here, and then basically you're good to go. So essentially it does require a little bit of careful handling that you need to be aware of if you're gonna be using the singleton pattern, uh, but just keep that in mind. So hopefully this part made sense. Let's move into the IDE now. We're gonna show you an actual example of this happening. All right guys, so here we are in the IDE. So let me just walk you through some of the code that I have here just to make this perfectly clear. Uh, so you can see here that we have a private static instance of our rocket ship class, and we're just calling that variable named rocket ship. Uh, and then we're making a private constructor here of the rocket ship type that does absolutely nothing. Uh, and this is the and this is intended to prevent external callers from creating an instance uh, unless they're using our factory method, which is what we have below. Uh, so here we have a public static rocket ship get instance method. And uh, the first thing we're doing is we're checking if the rocket ship instance is null. So if this is the first time entering this block. And as I mentioned before, uh, we need to worry about multi-threading in the case of this rocket ship class. So we're adding a synchronized block here so that if multiple different threads call get instance at the exact same time, there's only ever going to be one single instance that ever gets created of the rocket ship class. And then we just assign the rocket ship uh, variable to that new instance and return that back. Uh, so that is basically it for the um, singleton pattern. That's all you really need to know about it. So let's just take a quick little look at how this works. So you can see here, I'm just trying to call the constructor and obviously my ID is freaking out and complaining at me because the constructor is private. So this isn't gonna work. Uh, and then what we see here is I have uh, rocket ship R2 is equal to get instance and R3 is also get instance. And then I just wanna print out the lines here just to make sure the memory addresses are the same to ensure that only one instance was ever created. So if we go up to run and run this guy, 
Uh, what we see here over on the right when we system out print line R2 and R3 is that we are printing out the same instance of the rocket ship object. So we know for sure that our singleton pattern is working correctly. Uh, so if you enjoyed this video, I'll put the playlist for the rest of the videos in the series down below. If you liked this book, the Head First Design Patterns book, which I have right here, I'll put a description or a link down below so that you can pick it up on Amazon or whatever. And as always, please don't forget to like and subscribe so that you don't miss out on my next video. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll see you next time.